Today we're going to see how we can test user interaction by simulating the user clicking the button and checking that the count is indeed incremented by one. So we're going to go and write a new test that says it can increment the count uh, when the button is clicked. So once again I'm going to start by creating my wrapper and I will render the counter component shallowly. You could render the component once and use the same component for all tests that you write. However, this is dangerous because then one test could be influenced by another. Say for example, we have this test that the button clicks and the count is incremented by one. Another test that ran after that would then need to know that the count won't be starting at zero, but will be starting at one. By rendering the counter once for every single test, we ensure that each test starts from the same clean slate. So I'd really recommend that for every test, you render the component again. This time, rather than finding the paragraph and pulling the text out, we're going to find the increment button, and this will be wrapper.find button. Enzyme provides the simulate function, which is a really easy way to simulate the user clicking. So I can call increment button dot simulate, and in here I can pass in the event I want to simulate. In my case, this is going to be click. I'm then going to go up to my first tab and grab these two lines, paste them in here. If I save and run the test now, you're going to see that the second test is failing. It's saying that it's expecting the value to equal zero, but it actually received the count of one. And this is good. This is the failure we want. This is because down here, we're still saying that we should only have zero for the count, but in actual fact now it's going to be one. And that is that test passing. Let's now write a test for a decurrent button, which we don't yet have, and see how we can write React components in a test-driven development style. What I mean by test-driven development is that you write the test first, knowing that it will fail, and then you go and make the test pass by writing the actual code. So I'm actually going to copy this entire test block because our decrement test will be very similar. So now I'm going to say it can decrement the count when the decrement button is clicked. So again, we're going to render our counter. And now this increment button is actually going to become the decrement button. So I'll update both of those references. And finding the button again isn't very specific because we're going to have multiple buttons. So I'm going to give the decrement button a class of decrement, and I'll do the same to the increment one as well. So we'll do button.decrement. So at this point, the counter has started at zero. We've hit the decrement button. So the text should now not be zero or one. It should instead be negative one. If I run that test, you see we get this rather cryptic failure. Method simulate is only meant to be run on a single node, zero found instead. This isn't immediately obvious and it might not be if you're new to Enzyme, but it's one of those error messages that as you use Enzyme to test your React components, you'll become very familiar with. What this error message is saying is here we call decrement button dot simulate click, but decrement button was the result of searching for a button with a class of decrement, which didn't find any because it doesn't exist yet. So Enzyme is telling us that we're trying to simulate a click event on an element that doesn't exist. So let's now go into the React component and write the code that will fix this test. So I'm back over here in my counter component. I'm just going to resize the atom window here to make it a bit bigger to give us a bit more room while we're working on the component itself. There, that just stops as many things being wrapped on multiple lines. So you see here we have this increment button. I'm going to copy that and put it below. I'm also going to give this one a class of decrement. So if I save that now, we're going to see a different error. We're seeing that we expected the value to equal minus one, but it's now equaling one. And that's because the test is finding the decrement button and clicking it but of course it's incrementing the count rather than decrementing it. So let's go into this on click and change this to decrement. And I'll change this text here to decrement count. While I'm here, I'm also going to give the increment button a class name of increment because we're going to need to update our previous test in a minute. So now I can find the increment method. I'm just going to copy and paste and rename it to decrement. And our test is still failing with the error that we're expecting negative one and we're getting one. And now I can go down here and find this plus and change it into a subtract. And you'll see now that we've still got an error, but the error actually is in a different test. If you look over here, you can see that the decrement the count test is now passing. The one that's failing is the increment one. Let's go and have a look at the test and see why we think it's failing. So here we are back in the test, and you can see here that we're calling find button to find the increment button. But of course, finding the button, there's now actually more than one, there's two buttons. And that's what this error over here is saying. Method simulate is only meant to be run on a single node, two were found instead. So we could fix this by doing button dot first because we know that the increment button is the first button. This works, but again, it's quite brittle. What if our designer decides that we want the decrement button first or we refactor it and we reorder the buttons? What's much better is to use that class of increment that we added to the button. So we can run that and now all our tests are green. So that brings this episode to an end. We've seen how we can test user interaction via enzyme simulate function to simulate click events. And we've also looked at how we can power our React component work by writing the test first and then writing the code to make that test pass. 
You might be thinking at this point there's a lot of duplication in this counter class that we could clear up, and you'd be completely correct. In the next episode, we're going to see how we can use the tests to help us refactor and rewrite React components whilst ensuring that we haven't broken any functionality.